Hi, it's Amelia. It was an interesting day in markets, and I thought it would be great if we just kind of review uh, some of the price action and took a look at what's going on. I'm doing this for myself, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So there was a couple of things that started the day. Um, first, let's talk about the week ISM manufacturing number in the U.S. So here it is. Um, this is the PMI the Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing. And you can see here it came in at 47.8. The prior read was 49.1. And survey said it would be 50, which is the break even kind of for recession in the manufacturing sector. And so it came in way lower at 47.8. And this is the lowest read in a decade. And this weight on equities all day to day and also strengthened some safe haven currencies. So it was definitely a risk off day in the market. You can see over here, uh, the Dow Jones was down 343 points, uh, about 1.3%, and the S&P was down um, like 36 and a half points. Let's just take a look at what happened in currency world. We're here, and you know, it's a typical risk off day for currencies. What do we see? We see the Swiss franc, a safe haven currency strengthening, and we see the Japanese yen certainly strengthening on a day. Um, such as today. Aussie took a big hit. Why? Because uh, overnight, last night into this morning, um, the Reserve Bank of Australia cut rates, um, cut its policy rate uh, 25 basis points. So let's just take a look quick. Let's look at Australia for a minute. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, so the rate cut was expected, but still it weighed on the currency. And I wanted to look at Aussie versus Kiwi right now. Yeah, so it's high. It still had that run up. It's holding here above 107, the figure, and it's ranging. Right now it's like range trap, like 108.10, back down to 107, the figure. Um, obviously today did not help. Um with the Reserve Bank cutting rates. Uh, yeah, you can see it's just right here in that range. Um, I'm interested in if it heads towards the top of the range. Let's see, the recent high here, this is like a 108, just call it like 108.09, 108.10 area. See if we can break top side there and come back up to this um, 108.40 area. That's kind of interesting to me as well. Let's take a look at Aussie yen since we know the yen strengthened today. Looking at the crosses right now. I'm looking at this. As you're looking at this, I want to go through the markets today and I want to take you with me. Yeah, so we're sitting down here around 72 the figure. Yeah, on Aussie yen, that's what I said. Yeah, right here. Uh, 72 the figure. Um We've been below that, yeah, previously, earlier this year in August. In August, we got down to 70, the figure, which is <laughs> more interesting to me. Um, that's actually a giant level in Aussie yen. For right now, 72, the figure, range bound again, say 74, 72, the figure in Aussie. So looking to see if we can break downside, um, 72, the figure, probably need some more bad news, uh, risk off news to get that. Let's take a look at sterling today. First, um, it looked like we got some decent Brexit news this morning. There's some more coming out actually right now as I speak that hasn't been digested by the markets. Uh, there was an earlier story on Bloomberg that's saying the EU might be open to um, a timeline for uh, the Irish backstop, which is um, Northern Ireland being part of the EU trade agreement, while the rest of the UK is not in it. Um, and that's obviously been the point of contention holding up um, a Brexit deal. Right now, it just came out before I started the video. Um, Boris Johnson's Brexit plan includes two borders for four years, so they must be talking about the Irish backstop. Looks like Sterling isn't doing much right now. Um, yeah, Northern Ireland would get a special relationship with Europe until 2025. So that's pretty positive news, actually. Um, let's see if here in the Asia trading session, Sterling is reacting yet. 
Yeah, I was not really doing much. Liquidity is thin right now until we get further into kind of the the trading session. Um, let's look at a three day chart. We did get some positive news, as I just mentioned, that the EU might consider a concession. Um, and that did raise sterling today, but it's still under 124, the figure. So we really haven't broken any ranges in sterling. We're still well under 124, the figure, which is really the next meaningful top side break. Um, should we have some? And then on the downside, is 122, the figure, is really what you need to be watching there. We did trade in early September all the way down to see that low 119.59. So 122, the figure, 120, and that one, 19.59. But right now, yeah, we're basically just range trading here um, until we get more decisive news one way or the other. We're pretty much, yeah, we're pretty much here, this 122, 126 top side. But 124 is pretty meaningful, and on today is kind of, Uncertain but positively leaning news, we couldn't break 124 top side. Let's see what else is going on. Let's look at kind of the most read stories. Yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, it's really the U.S. economic slowdown because of that bad um, PMI number that... We got today, so that's kind of been dominating the markets today. Um, there's kind of an underlying worry about commercial real estate, especially in New York and London, and now here, this is mentioning Dublin, because WeWork isn't going to IPO, and they're kind of reining their business in to gather their thoughts and do a little bit better, <laughs> um, consolidate, um, fire some people who shouldn't be there probably, according to the Wall Street Journal. Um, you know, the commercial real estate market, they, they own a lot of it or they rent a lot of it, I should say, in New York and in London. And some people are wondering if that's going to lead to a little bit of a downturn in the commercial real estate in, in some of those uh, larger cities. Other people aren't uh, as worried about it. So, so we'll see. Let's just take a look at the S&P today. Yeah, we're kind of sitting, we're through the 50-day moving average. We're kind of sitting right above the 100-day for support that uh, 29.24 level, say. Um, we haven't really approached it yet. Um, if we take a look at what it's doing sector-wise, financials and industrials are down pretty heavy today. So is energy. Um you know, consumer staples and utilities, more traditionally safe haven sectors uh, performed a little better. Why don't we take a look at yen since we talked about that and that had moved. Overnight, um, Japan had a, a bad bond auction, which then impacted bond prices throughout Europe and the U.S. So yields were actually higher on bonds uh, today because that auction kind of, the bid to cover ratio wasn't so good uh, in the Japanese auction overnight. You know, yen is still strong relative to history. Um, we're trading this 107.73. I think we can get back down to 106 um, in the near term with some more uh, bad news. There's just so much uncertainty out there. And you can see that 50-day comes in just above 107 the figure for some extra support there. So I still like being long in. Um, I just think there's so much risk out there right now. Why don't we look at Euro? Obviously we should look at Euro. Yeah, I mean, it's been kind of on its back foot. It pushed well through 110 the figure to the downside. Um, it pushed through 109, but it's back up. This was a big move when we pushed through um, this 109.27 to the downside. We still, it still hasn't run um, too much further, but 110 historically is is a big 
level. Look at that. This is a longer term chart and that's 110 the figure. So we're now tracking obviously below that. And this chart is just interesting to me in terms of, you know, kind of the free fall we could have. There's really a lack of support uh, until 105. I wonder if we can just put... Fibonacci on this to check really a little further out. Yeah, so even Fibo, there's really nothing to 105. And then we have the low of 2017, the 103.41. So that is quite interesting. And keep that in mind. <laughs> if, um, you know, Euro moves lower, it could really move lower. I'm, I'm giving this video on October 1st in case you watch it a couple days or something later on YouTube. But um, yeah, that's it. it. A lot's going on today. I just wanted to pull this stuff up. Um, I thought it was interesting. I'm a runner. I mentioned this on my IG story also today. Follow Market Compass on IG and look at my IG intraday stories. That's helpful. Follow me on Twitter, uh, Amelia Bordeaux. And you can also sign up for my free content, www.marketcompassllc.com. Go to the front of my website and fill out your information there. Um, I just want to show you Nike stock today. It's interesting because the head coach of their professional running program, their sponsored running program, Alberto Salazar, who himself was a very famous marathoner back in the 80s, um, has been suspended by the U.S. Uh, anti-doping agency for four years uh, on doping allegations after a, like a four or five year investigation. And there's a Wall Street Journal article out that says the CEO of Nike kind of knew um, what he was doing. He got briefs on it. And so this really impacted Nike stock today. And you can see Nike stock right here. So once again, I love keeping up with you. Amelia Bordeaux on Twitter. Follow me, Market Compass on Instagram, www.marketcompassllc.com um, on the interwebs and sign up for my free content. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go through markets today. And I thought, hey, let me jump on YouTube with it as well, and I can show you guys what I'm looking at. Take care.